never know what might happen. But what would you do if you were hiking in the wilderness in the winter time and you got into trouble? Well, get ready to meet a man in Alberta who knows exactly what to do. Bear Lake in northwest Alberta. The mercury dipped to minus 27 overnight. Morse Kohansky trudges across the lake's frozen surface, a loaded canoe harnessed to his back. Morse is a survival expert, and he's hauling supplies to his base camp. Heavy pot. Right? That's the fire you need at 40 below, something like that. Yeah. Morse teaches people the skills they need to survive in the wilderness. You've got to uh, analyze the predicament you're getting into and then ask yourself how you're going to cope. Lessons he figures everyone who lives in this Situation country should learn. When you have nothing to eat, you just drink more water. Melt lots. I would say this should be part of your education, knowing how to be self-sufficient in times of hardship or in times of disaster. Like northern Alberta, 40 below, wind chills 60. Yeah, well, when does, uh, <laughs> when, does, when does a survival episode occur? It occurs on the darkest, coldest night of the year because you're foolish enough to drive that night and your vehicle seizes up 10 miles from nowhere. 20 years ago, Morse quit his job as a social worker so he could spend all his time out in his wilderness classroom. Now we got all the domestic stuff done. He shares his knowledge with groups like this one. They're here for a two-day course, and they've already spent one night in the camp. For most of them, this is a new experience. I was just trying to figure out my sleeping bag because I just bought it, and I didn't quite have the mummy string full. It was actually really good. If I had to, like, pull my strings a little tighter, I'd have been really toasty. Pretty good. Really nice. Nice and soft bed, and it was really warm. That was good. That was really warm. Good sleeping bag. Zipped you right up, crawled right inside, and didn't want to... Didn't want to get out, but first thing in the morning, but... <laughs> yeah, you, you find a place, like, past those axe heads there. It's a good place for kindling. When a group is coming in, I try to set up enough housing so no matter how, how cold or how adverse the conditions are, they have a warm place to go. I'm trying to give them enough knowledge that they could probably get by for, uh, from at least one night on a very severe night to maybe seven nights at 20 below or so. Now, if you're going to have to build a lean to out in the bush, this is the best lean to you could possibly build it. Now, this structure has thermal mass, which means that if you light a good hot fire in front of it, the logs will warm up. So your objective is to put enough snow that it's about this high above your bed. You don't need to cover it way up to there. You only need to have it so when you're laying down, the cold air that's over here isn't coming through there and making itself felt. You're sleeping with your shoulder touching the log. And from the edge of the bed, one good step, and you expect your fire to be no further than that. And so there's a strong emphasis on them focusing on keeping themselves from freezing to death and keeping alive through fire lighting skills, the shelter skills, and so on. It takes a long time to discover what is just right. It's better to listen to some old uh, geezer tell you what is just right <laughs> and save you lots of time. Now here, I have about five sticks, and that's minimal. I can light a fire with that almost all the time, but I'm not... Moore the says the first day. few hours are critical. You must move quickly, otherwise you could find yourself too physically and mentally exhausted to be able to do what's necessary. Hey, this is my tree. You guys get away. <laughs> now I'm going to go and get some uh, binding material because uh, one of the things we often do with a survival bundle is to tie it off. One of your first concerns in wilderness survival is fire. Using twig bundles is the most efficient technique for lighting a fire, especially if you can't afford to waste any matches. You hold it there, you strike it, get it in there, and get the match a centimeter away from the thing you're trying to light. And generally in 30 seconds, the fire reaches the point where you cannot put it out by wind. Get the string here. There we go. Now, since this is a simulated survival experience, today's students are lucky. They don't have to snare a rabbit for lunch. Morse has prepared his specialty, chicken and rice stew. Uh, if you put cayenne on it, you wouldn't taste the burnt. 
Of course, in the real world, you'd have to adapt a little and make do with what you've got. If we're going out for 30 days, how soon can you put the rations together? I think it's actually how maybe our grandfather, grandfathers or great-grandparents lived. That's how our native people lived for for eons, and uh, they didn't have axes or saws even, let alone many of the things that we have these days. You know, once you've got a pot, an axe, and a saw, you're, you can be very comfortable. Here I start with some nice boughs. I take three of them at a time. Some of these are kind of crude, and I put them on at 45 degrees. Little handfuls at a time, the way they grew on the tree. So the needles are upward. There's your dad. The knowledge he had was phenomenal. Like it'd be nice to, to learn even half of it in a lifetime. Make a rope that you'd almost think is as strong as the manila hemp. Just to have these skills, how to make a proper fire, how to make a proper shelter. I think it's all excellent. We learned a lot today. Now here we've prepared our bundle. It's in nice condition. And before the sun goes down, Morse has one more life-saving lesson to teach. How to build a signal fire to attract the attention of passing aircraft. When you hear the drone of an aircraft engine, you want that signal to the top of those trees within three minutes. See this action? Your smoke must produce that. It isn't producing that there, right there. The two minutes and 30 seconds, you'll definitely have dense smoke for the treetop level. Put it up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when they're up there looking everywhere, and they're going to see you. <laughs> Just go <laughs> <laughs> when you say survival, what you're implying is that you are confronted with a problem that if you don't know how to handle it, you're going to die. So I teach students how to get by in an emergency, and then how to get by in hard times, and then maybe how to really appreciate the out-of-doors.